We are coming to you from outside of North Mississippi Medical Center here in Tupelo, and we're joined by CEO and President of North Mississippi Health Services, Shane Spees. Shane, thank you for joining us. One thing that is definitely noticeable being outside the hospital, usually in the middle of the day, the parking lot is packed. It's difficult to get parking, but it's kind of odd to come here and see a lot of open spaces. It is, Craig. First of all, thank you for having us. and. Uh, uh, we, we appreciate the uh, support and contributions uh, by the public in helping our staff and helping our heroic staff uh, get through this pandemic. But to address your question, I mean, although we've had this COVID-19 pandemic for, for two months now, uh, you notice that the non-COVID related volumes have declined significantly. And that's partly due to government regulations uh, with the governor having restricted the types of uh, services we can perform but also just the general fear of the public in accessing a healthcare fear, uh, excuse me, in accessing a healthcare facility during this COVID pandemic. So I know you've started bringing back some elective surgeries. If you would just lay out for us where things stand, not just here at the main hospital, but system one. Sure, sure. First of all, we're excited to be able to reintroduce elective surgeries and procedures and visits uh, back into the health system as a result of the governor orders in, in both Mississippi and Alabama since we have operations in both states. So uh, on Tuesday of this week, April 28th, we uh, restarted a number of elective surgeries and procedures uh, here in the main, uh, the medical center here in Tupelo, along at Women's Hospital and the Ambulatory Surgery Center uh, just across the street from us. Uh, started on Tuesday. We'll restart surgical services at our Amory and West Point Medical Centers next Monday and then Hamilton, Alabama will soon follow. I think everybody would agree our world has changed since COVID-19, since the coronavirus. For folks who are coming back to the hospital for the very first time, what's that experience going to be like? Yeah, I'll tell you, Craig, it's, uh, it'll be very different from the previous experience because although we were a safe hospital and facilities coming into COVID-19, we've become even safer. So we put a number of precautions and protocols in place to ensure the safety of the public as well as our staff and physicians. So when they enter into our facility, they'll notice that we're screening all, all people who enter our facility. So we'll do a COVID-19 screening uh, on those folks. They'll notice that everyone uh, throughout our facilities are wearing masks uh, to, prep, pr to protect others. Um, they'll notice that we are maintaining social distances across our facilities, even in uh, the few waiting areas uh, that we have open uh, at this current time. Uh, what they don't notice or see are the sanitation techniques we use daily across our healthcare care system, which is just as important as the safety precautions we take. And so we've been fortunate over the past several years to use some of the most advanced technology and sanitation techniques, such as BioQuell and Surficide, uh, which are known uh, in the healthcare industry to kill superbugs, we call them, or or super germs, uh, if you will. So we've, we've had that technology and used that approach for a number of years now, uh, which, is, which has served us well during this COVID so pandemic. The, so the bottom line is, even though the hospital has treated coronavirus patients, people who come visit the hospital today for, for a variety of reasons, they really shouldn't have to worry about being exposed to it or anything like that. That's, that's correct, uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, and we started this very early on in the, uh, when the pa pandemic started in our, our market, uh, we separated the COVID-related patients from the non-COVID-related patients. And we've continued that practice even today and we'll continue it uh, into the future. Um, the other is that uh, we mentioned the safety precautions uh, that we've taken uh, and we'll continue those safety precautions indefinitely until we and the, and the uh, uh, the experts feel it's safe uh, to change those practices. So we'll keep those in place. I know a lot of folks have heard from Washington, from Jackson, hospitals are supposed to get some coronavirus relief money from the federal government. How does that play into North Mississippi Health Services? It, first off, do you even know how much you're getting? And second, how much do you expect that to help? Yeah, that's a... Uh, there are a lot of unknowns still related to that, uh, but we're very appreciative that uh, our U.S. Congress passed the CARES Act, which is intended to provide some financial relief force. 
Uh, we received uh, some payments in the first distribution they made uh, three weeks ago. Uh, and uh, as we look at our financial situation and the losses we expect from, from dealing with this pandemic and the loss of, of business or volumes as a result of the pandemic, we think this federal relief will cover anywhere from 30 to 40 percent of those losses. I know as part of that, you implemented pay cuts for senior management, including yourself. Uh, we had furloughs here uh, across the system. Now that things are gradually getting back to normal, how soon do you expect staffing, the furloughs to go away, the pay cuts to go away? In your mind, what's the timeline for that? Yeah, we, we hope sooner rather than later. Uh, but we realize that not all of our volume will come back overnight. So the staff will not come back overnight because we'll continue to match our staffing with the volume as it returns into the healthcare system. Uh, in fact, we'll, we'll return some of the first employees out from, fel uh, from furlough next week um, to address our needs in surgery, surgery and procedural services. So we're excited to be able to bring a few back next week. But we'll continue to monitor our volumes and the demand for services and bring people back uh, as we have that volume and demand for services. Uh, what time frame uh, that will be, Craig, is, is, uh, is an unknown. Um, a lot of that hinges, I believe, uh, on uh, the public's reassurance that it's safe to access care in a healthcare facility. And so that's why I think uh, segments or messages like, uh, like this interview is important so that we can alleviate the public's fear uh, of accessing healthcare because we do know that there's quite a bit of healthcare that they're deferring because of that fear. Uh, and we know in Mississippi, we have a large number of, of uh, residents who have chronic conditions that need to be managed on an ongoing basis, who have deferred care during this two month period of COVID-19. So it's important that we get them back into the physician's office, back into the hospital setting so that we can care for their chronic conditions uh, so they do not get worse over time. Shane Spees is the president and CEO of North Mississippi Health Services, and I think he could, he could vouch for me on this. This hospital is still going because right behind us we hear the helicopter. That has, I know that has not stopped, but anyway, we appreciate you taking time out for us on WTBA 9 Yes, thanks for having us.